Hey guys, I'm Chrome from Van City Van Life and today I'm here with Rainer and Madison from Ray Outfitted and some people have had some questions about all sorts of things when it comes to your van build and today we're going to be talking about what Madison? Ventilation and condensation. Yep, what she said. <laughs> So uh, a, a big topic for, for band builds and an important thing to plan for is ventilation. And this really strongly relates to condensation in the van. So first we'll touch on what we did in our van to prepare for ventilation and, and the condensation that you can't really avoid the realities of living in a metal box. Um, we're from Ontario, Canada. So what we talk about four season weather, we are talking like a plus 40 Celsius to minus 40 Celsius high humidity, high moisture, all of the mess. And then in the last two years, we've traveled over 100,000 kilometers coast to coast in Canada and the US. So I feel like from a North American standpoint, we have cover covered all of the climates. And a year into our van life, we also got to uh, pull apart our van and see what was behind the walls. And so all of that's helped us have a little bit of insight. And we use this with all of our clients, all of our van build consults that we do in terms of how we plan. So we'll start with our choice. We have no windows that we've added. Uh, and this was partly for um, our own personal preferences, partly for our, our design and how we wanted to use our van. Because we have no windows added that have ventilation capabilities and cracking your front windows is problematic when the weather's not ideal and from a security standpoint, we opted for two max air fans. Ours have the weather hood because the most important time to ventilate is when it's raining. Um, and so it's really important that we're able to keep vents open pretty much all the time, but in particular in wet weather. Um, so we have two, one over our kitchen that allows us, we typically have that one on out and that allows us to vent all of our cooking steam straight outside. And then we have another one over our bed. And so we've, these two vents can use to exchange the air. We can choose to have air blowing directly on us or gently passively pulling uh, past us if this one's on out. This lets us have a little bit of flexibility in terms of how we ventilate. Mm -hmm. From a condensation standpoint in our van, uh, when Rainer was upfitting our van, he made sure everything is breathable. So we have rigid foam and reflectics in our walls, but you'll notice nowhere is it sealed. In household, this mindset is seal everything, vapor barrier, lock it in and prevent any airflow. In vans, because it's impossible to avoid moisture, it's really important to let it breathe. So under our walls is quite open. And in fact, you get to have a peek. Because there is breathability, it means the inevitable moisture that can come in, we, we know it has the ability to get out. Where you run into really big problems inside a van is if moisture gets somewhere, but it has no place to escape. All of this leads into the question of what's best for you and your van. And like you hear us say over and over again, it comes down to preference. What we help, um, what we recommend is thinking about that total air exchange. So if you only want to have one roof vent, you definitely need to have at least one window that opens. If you have a roof vent and no windows that you can leave open in the rain, you're going to really just create a vacuum. These fans can go pretty hard, um, and it's quite funny how easy it is to actually seal yourself in if you don't have uh, a place for air to come in as you're pulling out or vice versa. Um, and so at a minimum, you want one window, one vent. In those scenarios, we tend to recommend, think of having your vent near where you're cooking, because that's gonna be your maximum source of moisture and condensation that you're putting into the vehicle. Um, and so in those scenarios, having a window near your bed might be really important to make sure if it's hot that you can cool yourself down at night. You can have many windows and many fans. There's many different options. And it all comes down to your budget, your preference, and the aesthetic you're looking for. Another thing to look at when doing uh, your single, if you're doing a single fan, if you want to use your front windows as your ventilation, when as soon as you put uh, window coverings in or close mm -hmm. a curtain, then that does mitigate how much air can come in through. 
So that also has to be taken into account if that is your route for um, ventilation. If that's your route for ventilation. And uh, as Madison said, that if you want to put in one single window, a lot of people opt for the sliding door window for more visibility. So if you want to do that and one fan at the front, take into account that the air in the back of your vehicle is not going to be exchanged easily. It's not saying it can't be done, just everything comes down to personal preference and layout. Your other option is these wonderful Conframo fans that Chrome raves about all the time. <laughs> Where'd you learn about them, Chrome? <laughs> From you. <laughs> Internal fans are really helpful from a ventilation and a circulation standpoint. And this can help with condensation management as, as well as your personal comfort. Having an interior fan lets you stir the air and that makes a really big difference. Uh, while we're talking about that, you might notice below us, there is a fan. I'm gonna make Chrome work for it. <laughs> so this was added because we have a platform bed and that makes it hard for airflow underneath. By adding these fans in, we're able to stir the air, exchange the air and ensure that everywhere we want to have airflow, we're able to get it. It's the same reason why some of our cabinetry is open all the way through the van, just to allow that breathability standpoint. Mm -hmm. From a condensation management standpoint, we learned our very most about managing that visiting Vancouver for the first time, where we were in Ontario and other parts of Canada and in the States, we were feeling like we never got condensation impossible. And we came to Vancouver and very quickly our windows were fogging up. And the great solution that a local Vancouver van dweller taught us was leave one roof vent open always. So for us, that's the one above our, our kitchen. 99.9% .9 of the time that is open. It'll only be on if we're cooking or need to really increase the airflow. But what that means is it has in Vancouver almost completely eliminated fogging up the windows. Um, when we're at minus 30 Celsius, that roof vent mostly still open because in those extreme temperatures, it's even harder to regulate it because it's so cold that moisture freezes fast. So you'll see some vans have their windshields quite frosted up and the solution is to leave a roof vent open. So it all comes back to why it's really important to have a weather hood if you live in a, a various climb, a various climate region because mm. it's gonna rain, it's gonna snow and you need to ventilate. So we typically opt for the max air fans that have the built-in roof hood or weather hood, uh, but you can also get uh, with the uh, lower end max airs or the Dometic Fantastic fans. They do make a weather hood that goes over top of them. Uh, just in our opinion, it's not as aesthetically pleasing on the roof of the van, but it all comes down to budget and preference. Yeah. Uh, one question that was asked in Chrome's comments was whether sealing the inside of the van mm. before you put insulation in is a good idea. Now, this can be debated either way, because if there's already rust there and you don't take care of the rust, uh, sealing in the rust does not stop it from expanding. So you wanna make sure that you have taken care of any rust spots before you do this. The advantage of putting a, uh, like a rock guard or lizard skin or something to that manner on the inside of the vehicle first, is you are creating a membrane between the steel and the air inside. So in low moisture, this can almost eliminate all condensation on the steel, but as soon as you get into high moisture areas, you still will get condensation. There's no way to completely avoid it. It is going to happen. Just ha make sure that you have airflow and availability for the moisture to evaporate and leave the space. Another factor to keep in mind for condensation management is, is your heat, heat source. source. Do you want to touch on why heat source matters? Uh, heat source matters because if you are using the Mr. Buddy or the Olympia Wave series, they are a catalyst heater, but it is burning inside the vehicle. Anytime you burn something, you will get condensation inside. So it is what we call a wet heat source. So it will induce condensation inside the vehicle. Whereas if you go with the uh, Espar, Wabasto, Plantar, or Propex, 
they are a dry heat source. All of the combustion takes place with ex outside air for the vehicle. Yep. So they are just taking the existing air in the vehicle, passing it over heat fins and blowing it back in. So it is no extra moisture added into the air. The advantage with this is you are now the only moisture you are inducing is while you're cooking and eating. And breathing. Or sorry, breathing. <laughs> yeah. So cooking and breathing being your, your prime places you're adding moisture in. Typically, if you're in a cooler climate, your heater, if it's a dry heat source, will help dry out the van. Um, so when we're in a cold and dry climate, we're adding moisture back in the van. We have a diffuser we use because it can actually get quite, um, what's the word, static electricity. I can leave the bedroom with the hairs flying everywhere. <laughs> and so um, factoring your heat source in when you were thinking about your ventilation, your condensation, your circulation, all of that is quite important. And I think we're gonna do a video with Chrome to talk a little bit about all your heat source options. So stay yes, tuned. Yes, we are. <laughs> I always love having these two a part of my videos. It's nice to give you guys a different perspective than what I can give you. You see, I can only tell you the stories from my own personal experiences, where these guys can tell you stories from everybody they've met along their journey so far. And I think that's very valuable information, not only for me, but for you guys too. Hopefully you enjoy seeing these two in videos. If you want to see their adventures, they have an amazing Instagram at Ray Outfitted. You guys can check them out online too as well as rayoutfitted.com. All right, so we're done, you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe and all that other good stuff. But for now, I'm going to go drink beer. Peace out. <laughs>